My name is Samantha. I work in customer support with Leicester and Marmalade. With me I have Andrew hiding in the corner. Hello. Andrew's one of the SDK engineers. Uh, we're going to tell you a bit about Web Marmalade. Um, so I might start by asking if any of you have actually used Web Marmalade up to this point. Not too many. And uh, how many web programmers do we have in the room? Anyone? Yeah, one or two? Okay, that's good. Um, okay, so I'll begin in a minute by telling you a little bit about what HTML5 is and what hybrid apps are. I'll then go on to introduce Web Marmalade and uh, how it can be used by web developers to develop hybrid apps. And then we're going to move on to a little demo, which Andrew's going to do. He's going to create for us, right here, right now, a nice little camera app. Uh, he's going to create it from scratch and show you how to edit, edit the template files, uh, add the camera functionality, and he's going to show you how to make full use of Web Marmalade um, using the simulator and the integrated debugger and how to deploy to a device. Hopefully we'll show you how quick and easy it is to get up and running with Web Marmalade. Okay, so what is HTML5? Basically it's an umbrella term describing a set of HTML, uh, CSS and JavaScript specifications. And it's designed to enable uh, developers to build the next generation of web websites and applications. So what are hybrid apps? Hybrid apps are basically written using web technologies. Like native apps, they run on device, but in a native container. They leverage the device's browser engine to render HTML and to process JavaScript. Um, the main advantage they have over pure web apps is access to device capabilities. They do this via a web to native abstraction layer, which pure web apps don't have. Uh, another big advantage they have over pure web apps is that they are publishable on app stores. And when compared against native apps, it should be noted there's a slight loss of performance you get with hybrid apps. Okay, so what is Web Marmalade? Web Marmalade basically supports the creation of these hybrid apps. Uh, the apps it produces uh, come packaged as native app installers, ready for deployment to app stores. At the moment, we support iOS and Android. Uh, it provides a complete implementation of the Adobe PhoneGap specification and includes JavaScript APIs for accessing device functionality, which are listed up there. You also get the benefit of the Marmalade framework. So, not only do you get uh, to support the uh, to target the supported platforms with a single code base. You have various tools such as the Marmalade Launchpad, which uh, automates your project definition, which means no need to uh, mess around with configuration files such as info.plist for iOS and your manifest files for Android. You also get the Web Marmalade Desktop Simulator, an integrated debugger for JavaScript. And very easy, one step deployment, building and deployment to devices, and one click updating to refresh your project in the simulator or redeploy to device um, after making changes. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to hand over to Andrew, who is going to give us a little demo. Okay, so, um, so as someone said, I'm just going to quickly demo the, the launch pad for WebMarmo and just show you. Uh, kind of what it is uh, and how to use it. Um, so in here we've got uh, actually 605 installed. Um, so I don't know if anyone's played around with the web marmalade side of things yet, but we have an actual launch pad, which is kind of your product project editor, but it's all there. Um, so you can see some projects here, it stores your recent projects. The little blue pizza one in there is my backup plan, should I have a Bill Gates moment? So that's my one I've prepared earlier. But uh, I'm so confident it's all going to be fine, so I'm just going to create a new project. Uh, there we go, develop a day. And that already exists, because <laughs> I've obviously been doing it. So that's three, because I made it. There we go. 
Um, okay, so this has done all the work. So most of you be familiar with the normal marmalade development process. You create an MKB, blah blah. It's quite involved. Um, this has done it all for you. So you know you don't have to worry about any sort of things. Uh, and in fact, I could just go now and just launch a project. Um, and that's a web marmalade app. So. The idea of this is to take the pain out of it for people because you know, web development is supposed to be faster, smoother, all the rest of it. Um, so, so what have I just done? Uh, well, let's go back and explore the project and see what it's created. So um, I'm not really going to talk about the sort of what it's created in the marmalade sense, but just so people sort of see what's going on. There's your familiar MKB. Um, we're not going to talk about that now because what we care about is how to develop web apps. So, what it's actually created and where it's thrown me is this web assets folder. Um, in there, we've got uh, index.html and a JS file. Uh, the JS file you don't need to care about, that's the core uh, JavaScript functionality for web marmalades. What we do want to care about is the index.html. So I can open that in a regular browser if I want. Um, it's going to be fairly useless because, as you can see, I got no pop up this time, um, so none of the web marmalade functionality works. So what you saw before was the web marmalade, well, the marmalade simulator. Um, so what does this generate for us? So I get to my trusty Notepad++, which I'm, uh, so I'm not a web developer, but I'm told that everyone likes developing in just Notepad. Uh, I don't know whether to believe that or not. Um, so this is a template project. Um, there's not a lot in there really. Uh, just in your head, we're including the JavaScript file, as you might imagine, uh, a simple div to display the Hello Mobile, and then the two sort of building blocks of any one web marmite app. So, uh, everything in Web Marmalade is callback driven. Uh, JavaScript is inherently callback driven. Um, you've got uh, an add event listener which listens for device ready, and that's the Web Marmalade specific uh, sort of signal. Everything's ready to go, and here's our entry points. This is your main function, if you like. Um, so let's go to the simulator. So I can just refresh this. There you go, the page is there. I just want to show you the speed at which you can develop. So just change the message, save that, and all go well. Set a load instead. So you can actually see what you're doing as you develop, which is one of the big, I hope, advantages of web marmalade over similar uh, products. So what I want to do is just sort of, uh, it's not going to be a singing, all singing, all dancing app, um, mainly because my HTML and JavaScript skills leave a lot to be desired. I'm kind of glad there's very few web developers in the room, so I don't embarrass myself too much. But um, so I just want to kind of show you what you can and can do this sort of thing. So we're going to create a very simple camera capture app. So uh, I want to, well, let's have a, I'm sure I should have an image first. Um, so this is hopefully not going to be too much programming because obviously no one wants to see someone programming all day. Uh, let's have a quick image tag. Uh, oops. And let's give it some style. Embedded CSS is obviously not good, but. Uh, I've already apologised once for my bad JavaScript and HTML. So, and it's too slow to do this the other way. Right, so there's a little image tag and a uh, quick button. Uh, no idea on next. My button. So, this is why I have my backup blue pizza if anything goes wrong, because this is going to be prone to mistakes. <laughs> and so, I think that all works, but the good news is I can check very quickly. Uh, so I've got a button, and I don't like this hello anymore, that's going to annoy me, so let's get rid of that. Um, so I've got a button to capture something, uh, I need to take an action on that button. Uh, so if I put I want it on lick, I want it on click. Uh, there we go. So. So if anyone's got a stopwatch, you can time it and see how long it takes to actually make this app, and then you can decide yourself whether HTML is quick. Uh, so um, I've got my uh, action for my button. Now, my brain is useless. I can't remember anything. So what am I going to do? Well, I can just pop to the documentation, and all going well, it pops up. And I want to do something with camera. And I look down and say, camera get picture. And I never read the docs. I always just copy paste them, for example. Because uh, does any developer really read docs until they've got it wrong? Probably not. Uh, so I'm just going to copy paste that in, uh, and get a higher quality. Uh, okay, so I don't really know what that's going to do because I haven't read the docs, but um, 
What I can do is I can just run it. Okay, the thing looks like it happens, but let's see what's going on with the debugger. So anyone who's familiar with Chrome knows the JavaScript debugger probably. Um, it works in the exact same way because it's using the Chrome embedded framework. Uh, if I stick a breakpoint on there, all going well. If I click that button, there we go, bang. Okay, so it's all obviously going to fall over because I haven't finished fleshing this out. So what do I need to do? Well, I know how this works, so I'm not going to bore you by pretending to read the docs. So everything's callback driven, so I need some callbacks to react to this function call. So we've got one for uh, success and one for failure, which is roughly the standard for a lot of these functions. It's, some of them have more callbacks. Um, so, in fact, let's not even do this. Let's crack the image. So, um, get elements. This is where it gets fun. This is when the debugger comes in handy. Get them up by ID. Sure, it's all going swimmingly well. Uh, so I'm going to open that, ah, and it's dumped it into the HTML window. So obviously that looks terrible because I'm not an HTML or a JavaScript developer, but I think the point I'm trying to make is it's very, very easy to get your hands on native functionality. Um, so in a couple of lines of code, I've managed to take uh, take an image from my uh, from my desktop. Uh, it also supports webcam, which I may not, for the sake of sanity, do. I might use the Blue Peter app to do that. So you have to obviously specify in the API whether you want to uh, capture from camera or get something from your photo library. But if I launch my stunning Blue Peter app, all going well. So this is a much better version, inverted commas, of what, what we've just seen. So capture photo, and you can all see that capture your um, bang straight into a web page. So um, I hope that gives you an idea of the advantage of web Um We've got a simulator today you can develop and refresh instantaneously debug with Chrome debugger. Um, but of course you want to see some on devices because that's where you make your money. Um, so I'm going to hopefully deploy something to an iPad and show you how quick it is. So I did actually try this yesterday on an iPad 1, and I sort of, uh, I started trying to take a photo, and something's gone horribly wrong, this is no good, it's broken, all the functionality's not working. And after about 10 minutes of opening up debuggers, I remembered that the iPad 1 doesn't have a camera, so uh, there was no great surprises there. Um, so, with iOS, unfortunately, you have to go via iTunes, which is always uh, the pain we have to live with, but it's better than having a Mac and a PC. So, all going well, the shirt. Well, stuff's appearing. Stuff's appearing is always good. And I think my cheese is about to open. So, just while this is uh, going on, so James is going to talk later about uh, what's coming up in 6 1. But, um, so, what I'm demonstrating here is the, is the built in functionality to so the APIs, as uh, Samantha says, the PhoneGap or Apache uh, Cordova compliant ones. Um, with uh, 6.1, we're going to allow you to actually develop your own uh, extensions. So, uh, using the Marmalade extension system, you'll effectively be able to expose any, any native functionality you want uh, via Web Marmalade. Um, so, iTunes is open. Oh, it's all looking so good so far. I never trust iTunes. I can blame I can blame Matthew if this goes wrong. Uh, and hopefully,
talk amongst yourselves in this bit. <laughs> It's always fun to come to talk and watch an iPad back up. It's, it really, really, really excites people, I find. So one there is more Android development. <laughs> <laughs> like well, phone I, 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 I do prefer deploying to Android. It's a lot quicker, but I think usually the selling point is to deploy to uh, Apple. So um, I, I'll tell you what we're doing while I'm waiting for that to happen, because I'm, I'm just going to show you it and you can imagine it's working. But um, does anyone ask me anything about what they've seen? Or? How long would it have taken you to have written that app in native? It was right as badly as it looked at. <laughs> um, it would, in all honesty, I think it would have taken me longer. Um, I'm mainly because obviously, when you're writing native codes, there's a lot more to do. There's a lot more. You've got to. Well, it's not as simple for more lines of code to write. Um, I think it's quicker in HTML, but for me. I'm not a great HTML developer, so then all the surrounding guff that goes with it, making it look pretty, getting your CSS right, I'm much slower at that. So I'm kind of I'm swinging both ways. I, I don't know which way to go yet, whether it's whether the world is web or the world's still going to be native. But I can see a lot of advantages to this. That was really quick to get your hands on native functionality, and there's a lot of web developers out there. Um, and browsers are getting better. It's cross-platform. You know, you don't have to worry about how does your UI look on iOS, how does your UI look on Android, blah blah blah. Um, so. I would say it'd be faster to do what I've just done on in JavaScript. My next question is based on the fact that I know nothing about HTML5, but it's been kind of touted as a, a new platform for gaming. Um, does Web Marmalade fully support all the features that that might bring? Of HTML5. Yeah. So, so the original idea of uh, what what PhoneGap did here. So I'll just start that. Um, okay, so that is it running. Um, would someone do you mind? Being my glamorous assistant mm -hmm. and swapping the screens while I answer that question. Sorry, it's really no. rude. <laughs> um, so HTML5. Uh, so the idea of when PhoneGap did their APIs was it was. Uh, I think we want that. Um, and that and switch the button. Um, so the idea was that it would be a bridge, uh, you know, phone gap, etc. The over would be a bridge between what we currently have and HTML5 because there's virtually no browser that's 100% HTML5 compliance. Um, so, so what some of these APIs do is bridge that gap in the short term. So there's things like uh, file transfer, file API, stuff like that, which is W3C compliant. Um, on top of that, oh, I'm being waved. Am I running out of time? No, you've got Oh, I see. That's good. Um, so there you go. Uh, so what was I talking about there? Um, yes, uh, so there's other APIs that provide functionality that HTML5 won't provide. So I think what started off as a bridging the gap is now going beyond HTML5. So in theory, when all the browsers are compliant, you will have full HTML5 support and the rest. Um, and in the meantime, some of these APIs cover those gaps. Um, I mean, the iTunes store, usually you have to submit and then they assess and then they, so, I mean, how have you managed to put it into the iTunes store? Is it a sort of beta version or something? Or? So, to, so to submit an app to the iTunes store, so what you end up with if you build an app like, uh, through this is an exact, so it, it's exactly like a Marmalade app. So under the covers, we're doing exactly what you do if you did uh, your standard deployment. So from that sense, um, the, so the deploy tool is simpler because we want we don't want people to be as bogged down with all the different details. Um, but what you get is the same. So uh, in terms of the submission process, it's effectively the same. Um, what I can't tell you about the future is so obviously if anyone's got an experience of submitting to the uh, iOS store, they can be very strict about things. And with HTML5, you kind of open up all possibilities because your your app can run via web pages. So how do they how do they validate these things? How do they verify that? That's an unknown, and you know it's always a bit of a game with with Apple about what you can submit, what you can't. But I guess people will find that out over time of what's what's acceptable to put on the store. But so in terms of submission, though, from a Marmalade point of view, it's the exact same as a as a normal app, only hopefully simpler to build a package. Well, I guess. Yeah, so so with that, is there is that possible to integrate with say IWGL and, and take them? Back end and render that stuff yourself. Yeah, so, so one thing that's coming up in uh, in six one is so access for everyone to do the sort of native hybrid apps and so native development and web marmalade. So if you're going to do that, you won't be able to do it as simply because obviously you need to get your hands dirty and get involved with native codes. Um, but what you will be able to do is say have a, a transparent web view 
lying over, say, a GL surface, and you'd be able to have native stuff running underneath and use maybe the web view to render UI or something like that. Um, so hybrid apps are definitely something that you know, we're, we're hoping people want to look into more and you know, hopefully we'll be pushing development along that, that front. And would you be able to hook up the event system in the building there, HTML, with, say, C++ callbacks in your own code? Yeah, exactly. So, we, so, um, so what's coming in 6.1 is uh, what we're calling the web bridge. Um, we kind of ex make it a little bit easier for you to do that. So we have uh, some auto-generating uh, templates that will create sort of uh, a skeleton JavaScript, a skeleton uh, native side, um, and that does all the callbacks for you. And then in theory, all you do is just fill in the gaps. Um, so you can expose anything you want by callbacks to JavaScript. Um, the idea is that you should just do absolutely everything in JavaScript that you can do natively. So I think yes to all those. <laughs> Um, there was one at the back. Is that? Uh, it was more or less the same question. It's just um, we need some clarification about the difference between web marmalade and the web view from the company that exists already. And also, if there's any kind of uh, performance um, issues <coughs> of having the web context within marmalade, uh, is there any hope? So, so the web view is so ultimately <coughs> this is running the same web view, but there so. One thing we've added to the web view is um, at the core of all this web marmalade, there's a single uh, single function that allows you to send text via the, uh, uh, from the web view back and forth to native. Um, that is the only way that phone providers allow you to do this. There's no other way across this bridge. So ultimately, web marmalade is built around that. So if you wanted to, you could take the web view and build your own version of web marmalade. Um, People may want to do that. We're kind of hoping that people will use what we've already got and say, you know, that's that's good. That saves us a lot of time. Uh, Performance-wise, uh, I haven't got the numbers to hand, but there have been some benchmarking done of the time it takes to get across the bridge. Uh, some comparisons against, for instance, uh, I think Trigger IO and uh, Cordova. Um, we're all, the numbers are all fairly comparable. I think we rate pretty well, but I'd, we'd have to we can discuss that afterwards if I can find the numbers. Um, Performance-wise, that's your always going to be your bottleneck if there is one. It's communicating over the bridge. But in terms of uh, what's running in the web view or what's running natively, the native stuff will run at the speed Marmite always does, and the web view runs as fast as the web view will run on the phone. Um, any other questions? How am I doing on time? Oh, so you're not supposed to say that. <laughs> um, go on, I'll come to you then. Yeah, um, when you set up the configuration, You, you could, yeah. We're not hiding anything. So if you, if you, so the idea is that for this this particular part of the platform, we're sort of saying, well, look, with Marmalade, you can do things that hopefully a click of a couple of buttons. But if you want to get your hands dirty and go and edit everything, absolutely fine. And with what's coming up for the the, the what the I said, what we're calling the web native bridge, um, you will probably want to get more involved in that and change whatever settings so you like. Would it be a good idea to restrict your build so that you only run on devices that are about natural and never? Um, I couldn't tell you that, I'm afraid. <laughs> That's pushing beyond my... Uh, but we can, questions like that, we can try and discuss afterwards. Um, yes? So, because it's a, a native web view, does that mean that on Android you potentially have different bugs because the implementation of the web view is different? Uh, it does, but from what we've seen, um, the bugs now tend to be, so HTML5 is not uh, particularly well supported on uh, Android or iOS and so For instance, I don't know if you've used it, but uh, things like embedded video for HTML5 on Android doesn't work. Um, but that's, there's nothing we can particularly do about that. I don't think we're in the market for, re, for writing our own version. There's also a bug multi-touch on iOS that lets, it's a serious bug for multi-touch on iOS that affects the web view. Yeah. yeah, so that, at the moment, there's not a lot we can do about that, really. Um, you know, I, I can't imagine that either Apple or Android are sitting on their hands, because I think both of them are thinking, you know, web is very possibly the way forward, so I can't imagine that these bugs will sit around for long, but we're obviously at their mercy on that, for instance. But plus, if you, if the bug is there in the web view, maybe people with older iOS are still gonna have that, even once Apple have fixed it, it's not as if we can push an update Sure. Um, again, you know, these are, I think, things you just have to live with. I mean, you can version restrict your app and say, you know, you need uh, the newest version of iOS. I think for the most part, I'd imagine that your layperson updates their 
their OS pretty much all the time. It's kind of the more techie people who go, oh, I don't want you know, version 4. Point, well, 4 4.0, for instance, for them, it gave me quite a headache. But uh, um, yeah, there's, you know, if, if there was something really serious and it was a nightmare, then you, know, you can always try and find a workaround. And, but we would hope that they will address those bugs themselves rather than leaving them outstanding. Um, anyone else? Ah, yeah, another one. <laughs> yeah. uh, when you build a runner, then they open uh, iTunes. Yes. Is that all the script that you can edit so that you can launch an altogether distribution? Uh, we don't give you access to that script. Um, yeah, I guess at the moment you couldn't change that, but um, if there was, I guess if there was a call for that, then we can all start considering these things. But uh, at the moment, we our script will either let you create a package. So you could just build a package and stop it opening iTunes and then run your own scripts off the back of that. So, but for us, you can either create the package or create the package and uh, run in iTunes or well, send it to iTunes. Anyone here planning on changing to anything off that? The, the future for you guys? Or are you going to stick with C++? <laughs> C++, I <laughs> hope. I'd definitely be interested afterwards just to hear people's thoughts then, because I, you know, I have my own opinions. I, I don't know which way the world's going to go. I'm a C++ developer, so I'm always probably going to go that way, but um, it doesn't mean I'm always right. So. I'd be interested in doing front-end work and stuff like that with HTML5, because um, artists are more familiar yeah. with it. Um, that means that we can ship all of that over to them. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's for me, seems one big advantage of just UI is, um, a lot quicker and a lot easier. It's cross-platform and it's a on in HTML. So. It's what the uh, Wallfire guys have done. I don't know if you've seen them. They use, is it Orsonium or something? Which is basically like uh, WebKit, is it? Um, but written for C++, yeah. so they can put a WebKit view and it will spare geo render it to render the... Uh, okay, the I haven't played around with that. But I'll, yeah, I'll so they basically create the UI in HTML5 and JavaScript. Okay. Transitions. Cool. Yeah. Everyone's everyone's trying it at the moment. I think everyone's got their own little ideas. So, uh, anyway, if you have questions or opinions afterwards, I'd love to hear them. Um, otherwise, I think I'll stop ranting. <laughs>